Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, his family moved into a very large home when he was a child. And soon after moving in, the paranormal activity started. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802. Or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown. Possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, that indeed it is. And uh, if you'd like to listen to the show with no ads, just binge away on ghost stories like nonstop. You can do that. Apple Podcasts. We've got our specific channel on there for it or patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com. Get access to all the new episodes, all the advanced episodes, the full archive of episodes, the bonus episodes. It's It's all there. It's Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of episodes of the show to just uh, binge away uh, 10 years worth of uh, real ghost stories basically every day of the week. Uh, It's Tony and Todd with you on today's episode of the program, and let's jump right in to our first phone call of the day. Hey, guys, this is David. So as a five-year-old kid, not knowing about the paranormal or anything at all, really, we move into this mansion house. And when I say mansion, it was a big house. And I believe it was, it was constructed in the early, mid 1900s. And so as soon as we move in, about a year in or so, year and a half, I'm already six years old. I started experiencing paranormal activity. Keep in mind, I did not know anything at the time. Because at the age of six, who really knows? Maybe nowadays, but I sure didn't. I started experiencing the worst of the worst paranormal activity. And it's one time that I can recall that it began as I was watching TV in my living room. I was all alone. My parents were in the room, door was closed, and we had soundproof doors, like everything. The walls were soundproof. You couldn't hear a thing. Their door was closed. My door was closed because my sister was in there. And it was just me in the living room. And I I, I was watching TV, and I suddenly started hearing some things move around, uh, such as dishes, uh, some bags, you know, crinkling, uh, footsteps, you know, you name it. And I, for a second, I thought it was a rat. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, what what's going on over there? You know, and I, I put the volume down for the TV, you know, just to make sure that, it was, you know, there wasn't no windows open or anything like that. So I, you know, second time goes around. All right, turn off the TV. I say, you know what, I'm going to go take a look. Nothing there. So this was the first time that I started experiencing these weird activities. And the second time around, I start hearing uh, someone walk in the hallway. And we had a long hallway, by the way. It was a very long hallway. And so you would hear that, that old wooden, you know, floor, you know, creak. And uh, it, this was late at night when I would go to sleep. And, uh, oh, gosh, <laughs> too many times I, I, I just... I couldn't really, it was difficult to fall asleep. Yeah, so that was the second time around. I started hearing, you know, footsteps and whatnot. I wasn't the only one who uh, experienced these things, but the majority of the time I was experiencing those uh, paranormal activities, unfortunately, as a kid. My mother, believed me, my dad was a skeptic. Uh, my sister was uh, among one of them that did experience a few things here and there, you know, while she was asleep. <laughs> And uh, she understood me the most because the third time around, and this was the worst, I'm going to say the worst, the worst thing that ever happened to me as a kid. I was sleeping. And as you wake up, sometimes, you know, in the middle of the night, you know, you just wake up. Okay, go back to sleep. As soon as I try going back to sleep, I feel this huge pressure, this weight on top of me. And I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. And I was face down. I was face down. 
laying on my stomach and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't speak for like about 40 seconds or so. And it felt like the longest time ever for me. And I was terrified. I was terrified. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know exactly what happened. And I had notified my sister because she slept in the same room as me. And I asked her, hey, did you, did you feel anything? Are you, you know, uh, did you hear anything at all? I was trying to call you out. I was trying, I was saying your name. And she said, no, I just heard you right now move, you know, in the bed. But I mean, I really didn't hear anything. I, I, I'm sorry, you know, like what happened? And so I told her what happened and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, and she came and she slept with me, you know, and, uh, yeah, she understood completely because she had her sheets, you know, from her bed, uh, be tugged at night sometimes. And, you know, she would be like, what the hell, you know, what, what happened? You know, she wasn't as terrified as I was, as she was, she's older than me. Um, and I was the youngest there. So I'm just like, you know, what happened? What, what was that? And so that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. I, I, people say sleep paralysis. In, in, in reality, it's not. It's actually a, a demonic spirit. It's a dark, wicked being that, um, that does that to you. I'm glad it's never happened to me ever since. Those were among the worst of worst experiences that I, that I ever had as a kid, as a six-year-old kid, not knowing what these things were, these beings, and, and that I was living among them. I'm not sure if I have enough time for one more, but I'm going to see if I can. Uh, I remember I was in the house completely alone. It was during daylight hours. My mother had gone across the street to buy uh, some groceries really quick. She said, don't move, don't go anywhere. And I was about, I think, seven years old at the time. And I was watching TV and then, you know, started doing my homework after that, turned off the TV. And I started reading my book that I had for school. And suddenly I hear this, this, this deep groan out of nowhere, just randomly. So no one in the house, by the way, just me, turn off the TV and I just run out the house. And I, I wait downstairs and my sister finds me and she's like, what are you doing out here? And I just told her what happened and uh, yeah, the, you know, same experience as I had last time and, and, and she's like, oh my gosh. I mean, it just doesn't, it didn't stop. It didn't stop. And too many nights, like I said, uh, as a kid growing up um, in that house for 10 years I lived, it was a very difficult time for me. Um, but now I'm glad I'm, I'm 27 years old and, and I understand what those experiences were. I know that the paranormal does exist and, and there's dark entities and there's, there's light beings, but of course, those dark entities do live among us. So thank you for listening to me. And um, I hope this gets on air. If it doesn't, it's fine. But um, I love you guys and uh, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, thank you again. Thank you again for your time. Bye-bye. Thank you for sharing that story with us. That's a creepy world to live in, uh, knowing that yeah. those things are there. Sleep paralysis. I mean, we've talked about it a lot on this show and people talk about it a lot when you talk about possible paranormal stuff. And I, I don't know, you know, I, I when you're that young, are you able to experience, parent, you know, can, can you actually have sleep paralysis at a very young age? I don't know. I I would think anything's possible. I mean, you could probably have it at any age, I would guess. I mean, yeah. it makes you wonder a little bit about uh, some of those experiences when you were a kid. Like, were those sleep paralysis? And, you know, you remember more as spooky dreams or seeing things in your room. Uh, and that's how your mind's processing it at the time. But is it more so just kind of growing up and, and having, you know, weird, creepy experiences, if you will. And, and then your mind thinking, oh, it's ghosts, but it's more explainable uh you know with the sleep paralysis under things 
there's so much, I think for me, like there's just so much open to sleep paralysis. Like there's nothing set in stone. This, this happens, that happens. This is how you react. We know it because we can test for it this way. Mm -hmm. I think if they ever get to the point where they can say, yes, this is sleep paralysis, I'll feel better about it. Cause then at least you have an answer mm -hmm. and you're not questioning if it's, if it's energies and ghosts and spirits and all that kind of stuff. I wish there was like an easier, like you could induce it. That would be kind of oh. interesting. You know, yeah, like yeah, go, go to right. go to the sleep study. You know, because you go to sleep these sleep studies. You know, for like sleep apnea and things of that nature. Uh, why not do one for this? Uh, and I don't know, if, I don't know how you would get someone to that state. My guess would be some sort of drug, um, because I mean, I've heard of people being more apt to having sleep paralysis when they're on Ambien or insert sleep drug here that's designed to help you fall asleep. Uh, and if it doesn't quite work right or the dosage isn't quite right or your body's not in the right spot, sometimes you can kind of get caught in that middle ground, which is between sleep and not sleep, which is essentially sleep paralysis. Uh, yeah. So I, I do wonder uh, if that could be studied a little bit. Like, what are people experiencing within those realms? And is there anything to what they're experiencing? Or is it all really just, uh, you know, just the mind uh, and the cognition of the mind firing what it's going to fire and it can I, I, I certainly believe can be extremely terrifying uh is it always paranormal i don't think so is it sometimes yeah i think there's there are certainly cases but i don't know if it's a majority can you imagine having the power to put somebody into sleep paralysis i'm gonna i'm gonna watch some youtube videos on that and start doing that <laughs> <laughs> You're like an evil superhero. It's like going to walk uh, around and like sleep paralysis on you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It'll be great. It'll be great fun. Something fun I can do when I'm old and in a nursing home. I'll just kind of wheel from room to room. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Oh, grandkids visit this week? Great. Sleep paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's the angel of death again. Anyway, if you like the show, sign up to be a... Uh, a uh, supporter on Apple Podcast or Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories or GhostPodcast.com. Until next time, for Todd and Tony, thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.